it crunching and creaking, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. Breaking two. A doctor, when, I get, when he gets the passion, is almost dead. It, it, he tries to you know, get him better, you know. And other people say, oh, he's dead. But doctor always wants to get his patient better. I think the car is running, it's got four wheels. It's got bad body, but still we can fix it. But after a thorough assessment of the patient, Look. some sophisticated diagnostics, That's fixed it. and a vote, the team decides that the Nissan is indeed a goner. So what you're trying to tell me is this is scrap, thanks to Mantis, and now I've got to go out and try and find another bloody car. That's what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. Still, it's not the first time the chop shop has lost a car. Their first project went up in smoke after a stray spark set it alight. No! No! I can't believe this one. But this latest loss means it's going to be even harder for Bernie to keep the numbers on the right side of the balance book. One thing that breaks my heart, and that's having money and just chucking it away. I worked too bloody hard for what I've got. I want to support me, the boys, my family. And that money is bloody well wasted. Just bang it away. Just chuck it out of the bloody window. Need something I've got to get on with. I need to buy something cheap, do it up, and earn some more bloody money again. So I'm cut the losses that I've done on this bloody car. Well, at least one thing. At least I can trust the boys back in the workshop. You know, at least they're not going to be pissing around. They'll be getting on with bloody something. How wrong could any one man be? Unable to hold in their frustration with the delayed start of the project any longer, the Chop Shop boys are working on their own interpretation of a Toffs off-roader. Lord Lipu, meanwhile, has got to come up with some bold off-road design ideas. He's preparing for a trip back to Great Fulford to get an insight into the ways of the country folk. Uh, hello. Uh, All he needs is a rod to go with his new tweeds and Bangladesh's answer to Mr Toad can finally join the country set. It's all very simple. It's a rhythm. You know, I usually know all about rhythm. There's a form of contraception I call the rhythm method. That I never quite understood. <laughs> I'm getting quite used to it this life. <laughs> <laughs> Does it inspire the designer in you? Yeah. That's what it's meant to do. Yeah. Actually, fly fishing does do that because it can't get your brain suddenly thinking yeah, yeah. and working. Meanwhile, back at the chop shop, the alternative Toffs Off Roader continues to take shape. <laughs> so quiet, nice, peaceful, you know? His fishing lesson over. Has all that country air helped Lipu come up with some ideas for a country off-roader? It better had. Another £400 and a couple of days later, Bernie reckons he's found an even better car from which to build the Toffmobile. Welcome to our new car. Where did you get the, get the zebra from? Africa. Listen, I've got you a nice big car, loads of metal on it. We're going to build it for hunting and fishing. However... There's still the question of what to do with the old Nissan. Well, it's out with the old and in with the new. New-ish. Now I've got a nice big old vlog of state. We're going to do something with that. And I'll tell you something, if they destroy that one, heads will roll, believe me. Hey, 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 hey! What the fuck's going on here? It's still banger racing, isn't it? This ain't banger racing anymore. It's a real shame, you know, it was a perfectly good car. I've seen it racing. It was fast. Mechanically, it was sound. It's a total wreck now. All I can see is my hard earned bloody money going down the bloody road. Ah, gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> Meanwhile, having lost a car, there's no time to waste oh, on the new baby. one. Come on, guys, jump in! Strip okay. it! Lumpish shit. The Volvo certainly looks the part, and it's the biggest car to hit the chop shop so far. Built by Vikings for Vikings. These things are built like bloody tanks. They're built to last. They just go on and on. Just, we call them the mother-in-law kind of trade. They go on and on and on and on. But maybe it's too big to transform within three weeks. 
it's a huge car and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be real hard Lipu is showing worrying signs of what Bernie would call creative constipation. Normally when a car in front of him is being stripped down to its bare bones, he would be brimming with ideas and performing his mystical Karma Sutra dance around the car. It's all part of his design process. Not today though. What's more, Lipu never puts his designs on paper, so the team is just as much in the dark about the Volvo's future as he is. Next day, it's worse. It's like a tank. Lipu doesn't seem to understand what the car will be up against on an English country estate. Rhinos, you know, gorillas, you know, the uh, big bears. It's, it's good car to you know, save your life. We have all those in this country, but they're all in the zoo. They're not moving around the bloody streets. Well, listen, as a designer, if I think to build a hunting, shooting car, then I have to think about all those animals out there. He said, in his words, <laughs> the most dangerous thing he's got close by is the local tax office. <laughs> Our people have normal dreams. Sexual dreams, dreams of falling or flying him, he dreams of baboons, rhinos, elephants, tigers. He's got like this mad jungle obsession. I know you want to get the body as high as you can. But whatever wild animals it is up against, eventually Bernie and Lipu agree the vehicle has got to be tall and have standing room at the rear for its passengers. This means raising the suspension and building on a higher roof. We've got to try and find and track a roof that's going to be near enough the right width and near enough the height which you want. And we don't want it the bloody height of a double-decker bus, right? Because yeah. it's going to look stupid, right or wrong. Or do you want to extend the complete roof? It, the, the complexity depends on you. Give me some inspiration, Lee Poo, for fuck's sake, because all I'm doing is standing around... And I myself need the inspiration. So, once again, Lipu heads out to the countryside, this time to a scrapyard in Kent to find a roof. It's proper vehicle to hunt, hunt rhinos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are tires. Proper tire for the car. Too heavy. And maybe he'll it's find some of that elusive inspiration too. Full Ford definitely need one of these caravans. Back at the garage, Bernie for once has been allowed to start work on the mechanicals before Lipu does his styling. But he is getting worried about Lipu's lack of ideas and the time being lost. You know, he's got to come back and get stuck into this body. That's why I've got to get everything done before he comes back. Because the two of us cannot work like that. I can't do all the suspension and mechanical work, and he's cutting the bloody body and putting the roof on. So really, we're stuck for time. It's three weeks to get this car done, sprayed, chopped, all the mechanical work done, suspension on the road within three weeks. We're now four days behind. I can't make up on four days. Even if the guys work 18, 19 hours a day, there's no way. Realistically and honestly, we're fucked. That's a nice roof, yeah. I think that'd be the better one to have. Vern is right to be worried. Lipu really is losing the plot. After a tough year building nine cars, he is easily distracted by a completely irrelevant car nearby. His thoughts turn quickly to a personal ambition that has nothing to do with the chop shop. Come here for a roof and now you want to buy a Cadillac. Well, you know what, Just you have some, sometimes you have to spend some time for your, your relaxation, you know. It reminds me of old days, you know. Nice. Still doesn't find us a roof though, does it? Meanwhile, Bernie's facing his toughest technical challenge yet. How to make the car taller and give it plenty of ground clearance. It's not how high he wants, it's how high we can safely get. It's the complete opposite of what they've had to do for all the other chop shop cars, which have all been ground hugging and sleek. So, how's he going to do it? The problem we've got is that these cars are so heavily built that to try and make the body higher and obviously push down more on the suspension, the steering and the main chassis, it's going to be very, very difficult. The only way we can do it on this car is the main frame where the engine actually sits into with the gearbox is to lower the whole thing by a good four to five inches. By doing that, then the prop shaft is out of line. 
the brake pipes obviously are not going to fit because they're going to be stretched. 